say you design power supplies and you want to be able to test whether they function correctly. Yeah, you need something to consistently draw load from the power supply. So for instance, you make a power supply that is uh, rated for 50 watts. Uh, you don't just want to be able to, to like plug it into an appliance and see if it works. What you want to be able to do is to draw a consistent load on the power supply in, for instance, one watt increments. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So what you see here, I'll get my teacher stick, is a bunch of resistors on a big aluminum plate. You see a current sensing arrangement and you see a control board. And all of this is laid out in a professional manner in order to maximize conveyance to the audience and make sure you understand this is how we went to the moon. Honestly. Well, this and duct tape, obviously. So what I did here is I uh, designed this board and it's, it's extremely simple. Uh, this is actually a repurposed board from another project. Uh, it's a USB port, a USB microcontroller, and two port extenders that allow me to have more IOs than actual physical pins on this microcontroller because it's a, kind of a small microcontroller. All this microcontroller does is measure voltage, measure current, and turn these little MOSFETs on and off. Now obviously these little MOSFETs are not going to be turning on a whole lot of current. So on the other side of the deal, uh, we have this output, this switched output, and that basically just switches on a P MOSFET uh, that is tied directly to load and all the grounds are common. So with this arrangement, I can turn off and on these power resistors. Now obviously what you're looking at here is not very many resistors. So if you just think about it, I want to be able to load any power supply in increments of at most one watt. I, mean, I actually want to be able to do like half watt increments, ideally. One way of doing it is to have, say you want to be able to test up to 250 watts, take 250 one watt resistors and turn them on and off. Your, your construction is going to be humongous. Uh, you're going to need infinite amount of cables running through. You have to solder a lot. Uh, it's just a giant pain in the ass. But fortunately, we have a solution. So the obvious way forward, if you, if you know how binary counters work, is to have one one watt resistor, a two watt, a four watt, an eight watt, a 16 watt, etc. And with this arrangement, with only these six resistors, we can load, a, load down a power supply in increments of one watt between zero and 63 watts. 37 watts. Well, 37, how do we load this down? Uh, let's say, well, we definitely need the 32, but then we need five, so we need the four and the one to be on as well, and the rest can be off. And that way we can get a really high dynamic range of testable power supplies with a fairly reasonable amount of resistors. And yes, this will be the default power supply tester for all my future reviews. And actually also for my latest past review, because I hooked it up to the Lenovo. Uh, yes, this is the one that I tore down. This is a Lenovo power brick, and uh, we're actually gonna look at the, the efficiency of this power supply. Now here's the interface for my test bench. And uh, for now, obviously, it only interfaces uh, this load board that I just showed. Uh, in the future, it will also interface the AC power meter that I'm currently uh, designing. Uh, anyway, let me just pause this for a second. Uh, what you see here is something I will probably uh, hammer home a lot of times in, in future videos. Um, you cannot measure something without knowing the accuracy. Here on the top left, uh, this is the voltage measurement. On the bottom left is the current. And on the right 
is power. There's a numerical average of all these measurements on the right. Um, one of the things you can do, um, for instance, here in the voltage plot, uh, if you view this in HD, you can probably see this. There's a thin blue dashed line right here in the voltage, and there is a thin red dashed line just here. In these plots, there are two averaging intervals. Uh, this blue line is the average of all the measurements in this entire plot, and the little red line is the average just in this blue area. And this goes for all three plots. And here, these, these numerical displays, they show uh, the average. Uh, you can switch here between short and long uh, integration. So short integration is just this blue area, and long integration is the entire plot. These, these green areas, basically you see, you see this line here, this thin line in the middle, that's the actual measurement value. The green area around it is the measurement uncertainty. Uh, specifically, it's the uh, standard deviation of the uh, signal samples. And one standard deviation means that out of uh, multiple samples, 66% of the samples uh, fall between or fall within this green area. And the uh, lighter green area is two sigma, or twice the standard deviation, and 99.2% of all samples fall within that area. So this is basically your measurement accuracy. You know with like a 99% certainty that your value is going to be somewhere there in that light green area. And just in case you think, geez, this, this guy's measurement setup, it's not very accurate. Uh, it is, <laughs> it's just, we're very zoomed into these uh, graphs. So if I uh, just unpause it, these, uh, this, this graph only goes like this voltage graph goes from 14 to 21 millivolts. Uh, so this is only, well, you can see it here on the right uh, in this display, the actual standard deviation is only between 500 and 700 microvolts. Uh, it goes back and forth a little, but it's, uh, it's in the hundreds of microvolt range. So it's actually reasonably accurate, especially for such a fast conversion. Um, so what I can do now is start up the power supply. And now immediately we see the voltage obviously jumping up from zero to 20 volts. It's actually 20.132 volts. Anyway, we can turn uh, one of the resistors on. So now we're drawing 600 milliwatts. And it's kind of fun to see like the voltage clearly dropped slightly. It's only uh, three millivolts, I think, three or four millivolts that it dropped, but it definitely dropped. And if we like add a little bit more power, you see here the voltage definitely dropping and uh, obviously dropping every time I increase the power by a couple of watts. So. Kind of cool to see this. So um, I did the work and I calculated the efficiency and made this nice plot. And actually, as you can see, I did this three times um, because I, I didn't believe what I was seeing. Um, the short version of this story is that I used to have a uh, very good uh, Fluke power analyzer and unfortunately it broke on me. So what I did is I used my commercial, like uh, consumer grade power analyzers, uh, a Voltcraft Energy Logger uh, 3500 and a Voltcraft Energy Logger 4000 Pro, which is kind of the successor, kind of a slightly lower quality one. And uh, I used my nice interface to draw a certain DC power and at the same time, I uh, took a photo of the power meters. I had both power meters plugged in. I had both power meters plugged into each other and the power meters themselves use a little bit of power as well. So I uh, compensated for that. And basically I found this, this wiggly line of the efficiency. So usually what you expect is obviously at very low load, the efficiency is low, but then you you expect some kind of reasonably smooth line up. You definitely don't expect that the power supply has a slightly lower efficiency 
at a higher power in this upward bit. But this one does, and it does consistently. Uh, as I said, I did this three times. I even uh, hooked up uh, to multimeters. Um, this line is the power consumption as measured by my Fluke uh, 185 and 183 after the bridge rectifier. So that's why this line is a little bit higher than the other. But otherwise, the shape is the same, and it still shows this this dip here, and this dip here, and this dip here. And also kind of a weird plateau here with a higher efficiency here. This is, this is just a, a slightly weird curve for a power supply to have. I'm, ex I'm accustomed to much smoother lines. Anyway, what we can see is that the power supply, if we just look at the red and blue line, uh, it achieves about 87% uh, efficiency over most of its useful load range, so between 30 and 80 watts. And that's another thing. Uh, this power supply, it's uh, we saw that it has overcurrent protection in it. We know that it's a 65 watt power supply, so you would expect this this here is roughly the maximum power it can deliver. And after that, you definitely expect a drop off in efficiency, but you also don't expect it to deliver that much power, but it actually delivered 83 watts until the voltage actually started sagging in big time. Uh, that's, that's a very high margin. That's, but of course it's not all rainbows and sunshine. Um, we're looking at the uh, AC coupled output here. So we're looking at the um, voltage ripple on the power supply. And just for your reference, uh, here I just uh, put a little BNC plug directly onto the output voltage and AC couple it in the, in the oscilloscope itself. If you load down the power supply, uh, let's first go to a nominal this is about 50 watts uh, power consumption. Well, I got pers persistence on just to show the peak values. And I actually have to go down. Yeah. So the peak values of the uh, ripple voltage is close to 4 volts. Now, of course, part of this is just the cabling. The cabling isn't great. But this definitely wouldn't happen on a uh, well-filtered power supply. And the... Uh, RMS value of the ripple is 500 millivolts already at 50 watts. Uh, that's that's a pretty high ripple. If we go to maximum load, so here we're at rated load, uh, we're at 66.3 watts, and we're seeing almost 600 millivolts of ripple. That's very high. Uh, and we already saw that. We saw almost no filtering on the output. Uh, you would expect some kind of like LC filter type arrangement on a good quality power supply. But I think the reality is that they just wanted the smallest possible power supply. Another thing I will be regularly doing in reviews is looking at the um, power supply with this Seek thermal, uh, thermal imaging camera with a little extra chalcogenide uh, lens on it. Uh, this is a zinc selenide lens. Um, then we can look a bit closer, it has a closer focusing distance, and see which components are actually getting warm. Uh, I'll have to figure out a better way of doing this, but uh, the power supply is on. This is just its idle state. And I'm going to increase the load now, and we're going to see stuff heat up. Uh, I'll start at, uh, let's do 20 watts. And honestly, not much going on. Yeah, the, uh, the blip you see on the far left, you see a small, um, brighter orange area. That's just a reflection. That's a solder connection. Uh, that is uh, reflecting some heat from another source, I guess. Yeah, honestly, not that much going on. Uh, here we're looking at the MOSFET, so I can still point with my finger. There is the primary MOSFET. And 
now in the middle of the screen here is the secondary diode and yeah the hottest point is the diode heatsink yeah pretty much so it is definitely heating up and uh, the biggest heat source well yeah that the maximum heat source now is now in the middle that's the current sensing resistor but yeah that's that's supposed to get hot so that's not really a problem uh, yeah looking good so far let's increase the power uh, we're going to about 40 watts yeah the secondary side is definitely heating up the most primary is not that interesting let's just go a uh, whole hog 65 watts almost exactly yeah uh, we definitely see stuff going on here uh, so here that's that's the NTC yeah that's definitely getting warm we now also see the bridge rectifier here I have to be really careful that I don't touch anything uh, heating up quite significantly and the bridge or the uh, secondary rectifier is now at 46 degrees C and we can also see the current sense resistor slightly heating up and the primary MOSFET is still a couple degrees under the secondary rectification so in this power supply I would say maybe maybe an obvious optimization would be this this inrush current limiting NTC uh, because it's uh, definitely heating up more than I would expect and the output rectification now we can rotate the power supply around and see if anything on the bottom side gets hot not really we basically see the same same thing happening as on the top uh, we see the area around the MOSFET and the area around the diode uh, heating up the most now up to 50 degrees which is still reasonable uh, these power supplies usually get to 70 or 80 degrees inside obviously this is now uh, free to air so so I hope you liked uh, a tour of my new test setup uh, I will be using this both professionally and for these reviews uh, some other announcements first of all I will be improving my sound quality using this uh, it's a sound recorder <laughs> I realize I've been using kind of a bad microphone in the last uh, 12 videos uh, I kind of forgot that I have an audio recorder, uh, but I do, and it's a really good quality one. Another thing is I am selling stuff. Uh, I have a store on Tindy.com, which is like a mm, sales platform for kind of small hardware projects. Uh, I will be selling most of my stuff on there. Uh, it's a very cool site. Check it out. Uh, I will be selling all my sensor stuff. I'll also be selling what I shown in this video, although it's kind of in a prototype phase right now. Uh, that's going to take a while, but other stuff uh, like this Thursday, probably I will be doing a video about my open source fan controller. That one will be sold there. Really cool project that I made for uh, another person on tweakers.net. Uh, uh, basically, check it out. Uh, check it out every once in a while. I will be posting lots of projects, probably tens of projects over the uh, coming year. So yeah, hope you liked the video uh, and see you on Thursday. Gentlemen, welcome back to the show. Wait, that's the other guy, right? So there's this thing, right? Uh, I start this new YouTube channel and I say I'm going to tear down like 30 or 40 power supplies and then I'm gonna do other stuff as well. So here's milling.